Good morning, and welcome to The Labyrinth. My name is Jane Decker, and I am a Veritatis Certified Labyrinth Facilitator. This morning, we're at the Duncan Center in Delray Beach, Florida. I come to The Labyrinth because for me, it has always been a place of quiet contemplation, a place where I feel safe, a place where I have conversation with the God of my understanding. I'm able to release the cares that I have on any given day and come to the center and listen to a power greater than myself help me with the problems that I have. As I leave my labyrinth center, walking the same path, God comes to me in many different ways, but he always comes. And I encourage you to come to the labyrinth and find your way, your new path. This labyrinth is a short labyrinth. And that means that it has the same components that the labyrinth built in 1201 AD in Chart Cathedral has. A labyrinth is unlike a maze in that it has only one entrance here, which becomes the same exit. It also has circuits. The sharp labyrinth has 11. And as you watch, the dark spaces are the path or the circuits. Because a labyrinth has only one entrance and one exit and one path, we never plural the word path. We only plural the word circuits. And the circuits refer to the number of times that you walk around the center of the labyrinth. So here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, center. In the Christian world, we believe that these petals in the middle represent the six days of creation. The first petal, because we have walked into the center clockwise, will be on your left. It is minerals. The second would be trees, plants, bushes. The third, animals. The fourth, people. The fifth, angels, and the sixth is the unknown. The center space, as well as the rest of the labyrinth, is a very spiritual, safe place. When we walk, we walk at our own pace, sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. However we walk, our spiritual being becomes part and parcel with the labyrinth, which is why we always suggest that you walk in your bare feet. Sometimes I'm able to focus, but most of the time I come to the labyrinth in a scattered state. So the walking becomes my meditation. And as I walk, my mind quiets and my physical body quiets. Do what works best for you. Say a prayer, say a meditation, or just walk. How did Christianity and Labyrinths come together? During the Middle Ages, we believe that several cathedrals in Europe had labyrinths on their floors. And they were used as a place for people to make their pilgrimage those people who could not pilgrimage to Jerusalem with a crusade would go to, if you will, the local labyrinth and make their pilgrimage to Jerusalem walking in Christ's footsteps. You mentioned to me that the labyrinth is, is not religious, it's spiritual. What, what does the labyrinth bring to the individual doing it? The labyrinth brings a space that is safe and secure, where individuals can bring their sadness, their, their troubles, 
their problems in a very troubled world. We need safe spaces. We need places for people to come. When people first come to walk a labyrinth, they always want to know, oh, how do I walk? Where do I go? How can I not know where I am? And the purpose of the labyrinth really is not to think your way like you would in a maze, but just to follow the path. So you enter the labyrinth and you are walking the path. Because there is only one way in and one way out, you just walk. However your pace may be, you walk. Sometimes, as you will see as I am walking, you are very close to the center. Here I am. I can almost touch it. And then as I continue to journey, sometimes I get further and further away. The labyrinth can be done either alone or with a group. And I think the experiences are different. With a group, you are part of a group journey. When you are doing it yourself, you are only you and the labyrinth. There are times that I like to be in a group. There are times that I like to be alone. And sometimes God creates the time for me and knows what it is I need to have when I am walking. Tell me about the three stages of the labyrinth walk. The first stage we like to call releasing. And that's when you enter the labyrinth and before you get to the center. Take your grocery list and put it in your pocket. Don't think about too terribly much. Just walk and allow God to begin to talk with you. As you walk toward the center, the second stage is the receiving stage. You are listening and clearing your mind and hopefully something will come to you that will help you with whatever you have brought to the labyrinth, whatever problem you have brought. So tell me about the third stage of walking the labyrinth. Releasing, leaving all of my cares, all of my troubles in the center of the labyrinth and listening to my spiritual being, my God, and my understanding of his hopes and dreams for me as I finish my walk and continue on my day. As our labyrinth journey comes to a close, we remember why we came, to reduce stress, to find a safe place, to walk in company with God. And as we leave, God is with us for the rest of our day. For those of you who would like more information about the labyrinth, please call the Duncan Center. For more information about the labyrinth, you can go online to the labyrinthsociety.com or veriditas.org.